ladies and gentlemen, you know Hugo Wolf is one of those composers that just because we are not aware of his piano concertos or his symphonies, I remember when I was young and Gerald Moore wrote in his book that he was as great as Schubert and Schumann and I couldn't believe it because basically I'd never heard anything by Hugo Wolf. But we have to admit that in the world of leader, Hugo Wolf stands up there with Schubert and Schumann and Brahms as one of the truly great composers of song with text of all time. And uh, wonderful music. It, he took the harmonic language of Wagner and turned it into a humanly acceptable dimension of length and intensity. So that in fact, instead of hours and hours and hours of Bayreuth, you can get the same sort of sense of enjoyment in seven minutes or even less. <laughs> One of the only composers, I think, who fruitfully exploited Wagner's um, discoveries and um, with, a, with, a, with a feeling and a depth of response to texts. Um, you're going to do two songs from Wilhelm Meister. I have the first edition of Wilhelm Meister here of Goethe from 1795. And I just thought I'd show you the German public, when they read a book like this, when a lyric came, it's there printed in the middle of the novel in a fold-out. Wow. That's Reichardt's, in the middle of the book. Wow. Such is the education of the German public of the late 18th century that to furnish a musical <coughs> illustration in a novel seems a natural thing. It never happened in English publications. <laughs> but in a sense, there you have in a nutshell why the whole German world of the lead is so exceptional. A fractured series of very small countries, sometimes ruled by princes, electors, sometimes tyrants, sometimes enlightened rulers like Goethe's in Weimar. And so, not united to any sense of sinister political purpose or ambition, but having such an extraordinary sense, whether Catholic or Protestant after the Thirty Years' War, living together and cultivating the arts and poetry in a way that has been unequaled. And the world of leader and poetry is the fruit of that historical anomaly of a country that wasn't yet a country but was a series of <coughs> harmless little countries and energies went into the artistic capital rather than, you know, Prussia was always there of course, but some of the greatest things didn't happen in Prussia. They happened in some of the smaller parts. Indeed, in that small um, central dukedom of Weimar where Goethe produced some of his greatest work and where some of the greatest music of Bach was composed and many other. I mean, this is the miracle of German history before the terrible aspects of it in the 20th century. And that's why we have to thank um, the leader repertoire. Now, Mignon was this character, we all know about her, and she uh, was protected by Wilhelm Meister, who bought her out of a type of slavery, which I think was a type of sexual slavery as well. It's not actually referred to as such in the book, but you didn't refer to those things. And she's in love with him, and she's highly strung, and she doesn't know who her parents are, and we find out who they are at the end of the novel. And Schubert does marvelous, marvelous Mignon songs, and Schumann does marvelous songs. And other composers have done Mignon settings. Tchaikovsky, for example. None but the Lonely Heart um, is this same poem. Mm -hmm. But this, this is the only one that shows, as in the book, that Mignon is highly strung like a wire, like a, like a coiled spring. And to the point of neurotic illness almost. Do you think that's what comes across in this particular piece? Yeah, definitely. 
very different from the others, isn't it's, it? It's wild, yeah. <laughs> when you consider how Schub Schubert goes with just those wonderful slow triplets of Nur Vedi Zenzelkant, and then you have this madness. Let's hear it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. You have a compelling stage personality and, and lovely color in the voice as well. Don't forget that she's um, an innocent young girl. Yeah. Although, to a certain extent, you have to blame Wolf for the fact that he actually makes her rather more complicated, you know, than... Yeah. Um, he makes her a bit more complicated than Schubert. I mean, Schubert is not to be outdone in terms of the simplicity of the character. Yeah. But Wolf always, he didn't really rate Schubert, you know. I mean, Brahms was the one who knew his Schubert. But Wolf was looking for something. In my opinion, the one thing that I would suggest here is that the main tempo is too slow. <clears throat> I believe if I was to play you just the last two lines. Where is the big writ? You say no writ, but you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you write no writ, but you did it. <laughs> Etwas you see, all your beschleunigend and, and big, really sehr belebt, they were fast enough. Okay. But the rest of it can't be twice as slow. And when yeah. there's a rest, the whole song can't actually go out to lunch. <laughs> it's got to keep going. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It Absolutely. really, really stopped. Yes. <clears throat> Ist in der Wald, 
That, I think, is what yeah. Wolf meant. Yeah. And you don't have to finish it off. Nobody saying to Ken Falk, don't try and finish it. Just let the piece. You also wanted to rat rail that. Yes. <laughs> Nobody saying to Ken Falk, it's like da 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 da. Yeah. It's much more. It's much more dramatic. It's and it doesn't turn it into a huge big girl meal. The way we did it just now, she remains fragile and small in a way. Yeah. The more you extend the time span, the bigger she becomes. Right, right. You see what I mean? This mm -hmm. is just like an exquisite but tortured little miniature. Yeah, totally. And that actually goes really <clears throat> together with her personality, who she is in the novel, what she's doing, and so on. Yeah. And... Um, the etwas belebt, well, I, I mean, again, my tempi were the same when you were very fast. It was just at the outer tempi, and that I didn't allow it to come to a, an ending. Yeah. He was deliberately doing differently from the famous. I think he must have known, certainly, the Schubert. You know, for the benefit of the audience. That is the mood of Mignon in Schubert, and it's very, very touching. But he wanted to produce, I'm not going to say a post-Freudian thing, because he wasn't post-Freudian. He was pre-Freudian, but a lot of Wolf's work seems to indicate in the Vienna of that fervid late 1880s, the piece is written in 1889, um, a sort of readiness for the psychological work of Freud and mm -hmm. what Vienna represented. You know, and the hysterical aspects that Freud talked about of, of trauma with his female patients. Yeah.